on-time local news, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Well, happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Primetime Local News. Connor Chan and Abby St. John is here filling in for Elise Darwish as we got lots coming up on the go today, including our question of the day. Have you played any old school video games recently from your childhood? And if so, what were they? So I'll ask you right now, what's, your, what's uh, one you can think of? Well, I revisited Club Penguin recently, <laughs> um, but a lot of like the Super Mario games are always yeah. a great one to go to. Is they're, you know, they're fun to do. So Absolutely. I like going back to those ones. Absolutely. For me, it's Pokemon Snap. I love that game. Such a classic one. But we'll have all these stuff and more coming up later on in the show. But right now, let's head over to Josh Ryan live at Lloyd Mall tonight. Thank you very much, guys. We're down here at the Lloyd Mall for their first ever indoor tennis tournament, indoor kids tennis tournament uh, in the open slot here on the west side of the mall. As you can see, uh, plenty of kids are enjoying themselves. The actual games haven't started yet. That'll get underway in just a couple of minutes time. Anywhere from six years old to 12 years old will be competing for prizes worth as much as $300. So it should be an exciting couple of hours. For now, let's throw it back to you guys and a look at your local news. In new development, China has now stopped all Canadian exports of canola as they turn up the heat in their diplomatic spat with this country. The news rolled out Friday and farm groups are already expressing their concern. I think this is a pretty big hit to our industry and to producers and to Canada. This is a big hit in a, in a time when producers are just gearing up to go to the field for seeding. Boxall, Boxall, who farms near Tisdale, says the move creates a lot of economic uncertainty for producers. About 4.3 million tons, or about 40% of Canada's canola, goes to China every year. Total shutdown of exports has grave implications as farmers are looking forward to seeding this spring. These are issues that farmers have no control over that hits our bottom line hard and affects us and our communities and this country and the industry as big as canola exports, which is... In, similar to the automobile sector, right? We need this issue with China fixed and we need it fixed now and they need to do whatever they can to get it resolved. For an industry that brings in some $2.3 billion in revenue, canola prices have been soft since the fall. The Thorpe Recovery Centre recently received a donation from SEGA and our Jasmine King has more on the contribution. Peace Centre received a $10,000 donation Sega and Gold Horse Casino were both involved in the donation as they were glad to be supporting the local center. What Thorpe does for Thorpe Center does for the community and the provinces is the health and wellness of everyone is huge within our beliefs um, for Sega and Gold Horse Casino. So this to us it means a lot for us to be involved in the recovery of people. Most of the donation will be going towards a garden being built for the residents. Well, we were pretty excited. We've been doing some fundraising for this for a couple of years now, trying to get uh, the funds necessary to start the project. And so, yeah, it's a great help towards moving forward with that. These center is glad that they're receiving support and being recognized by the community. These, uh, these types of associations don't really run on themselves and they, they need community support and we're definitely trying to put our presence out there so that people know that, uh, that we're out here. We've, we've moved from Lloydminster out here and so with that came a few, a few uh, trials and tribulations so uh, definitely this helps out for, for getting, that, getting the funding from, this, from the community. Jasmine King, Primetime Local News. The Lloyd Minster Muslim community is joining others across Canada, opening their mosque to visits from the public. The mosque will be open to visitors weekdays between 6 and 8 p.m. and will feature an exhibition explaining Muslim beliefs. The exhibition will be of uh, Islamic beliefs, uh, what Muslims believe in, the unity of God, and how, why do they come five times for prayers, why do they believe on cer certain you know, aspects, and what is the difference between other religions and Islamic religion? The Visit a Mosque campaign has been started after the mosque attack in New Zealand, and Azim says the Lloyd Minster community has been very supportive. We have been receiving flowers, we have been receiving messages of solidarity. The RCMP chief actually emailed us that any kind of support you guys need, any, anything that you guys require, we are here to provide it to you. And that was on the day of uh, that tragic incident. It was so fast that we want to thank all of our community members and to RCMP as well to provide such a good care for us. 
Azim hopes this campaign will help create understanding between Lloyd Minster residents and the Muslim community. And now we'll go live to Josh Ryan, who is on location live at the Lloyd Mall. Thank you very much. We're back here in the Lloyd Mall. It's first ever, in combination with the LTA, first ever kids indoor tennis tournament. I am joined by Leo Aguinaldo, one of the co-organizers of this event today. So very exciting times, more than 30 kids turning out for your first ever tournament. It is actually more than 30 kids. We have 15 kids yesterday and I thought for a while when I was doing the schedule last night, we are done for uh, the rest of the tournament and then at four o'clock my, my phone's just buzzing and then people are wanting to um, sign up and we ended up more than having more than 30 kids today so um, yeah we got lots of volunteers actually working on the schedules and court assignments right now and so we're happy we have a good turnout. Yeah. And you guys have quite a few uh, prizes as well tell us a little bit about uh, some of what the kids can win because there's actually quite a bit of hardware available. Okay, so um, for this first ever uh, indoor tennis tournament um, partnership between Lloyd Mall and the LTA, we actually divided the kids into three groups. We have the six to eight years old, and then the nine to 10, and then the 11 to 12, and whoever wins will be going home with a gold medal and a $300 worth of Lloyd Mall gift card. And I think there are some more other gift cards. And then the runner up will be uh, going home with a silver medal and $200 worth of um, Lloyd Mall gift cards and some other gift cards. And then, well, nobody will go home without, with, with empty-handed, empty right? So um, we will be giving um, more giveaways and freebies for the kids who actually partic participated today. Sounds like there will be plenty of fun for them even after the tournament is done. We'll be back. Let's throw it back to you guys, though, in studio. All right, thanks very much, Josh. Take a look at your weather right now. Nine degrees right now with cloudy, with a bit of sunshine and some cloud coverage there. Saying at nine degrees, of course, that wind chill makes it feel more like six degrees with some records for this time of year. Four degrees, 14 degrees, excuse me, back in 1993 and minus 21 degrees back in 1990s. Take a look at our satellite radar map. Bit of cloud coverage, bit of activity going on in the Edmonton and Vegreville Marwain area as well as up in Cold Lake as well. Take a look at some watches and warnings. That special air quality statement, of course, that was in effect yesterday and they did have that until noon today in Edmonton due to some pollution as well. Of course, that was mainly the concern heading into yesterday, but it died down earlier on in at noon, around noon today. Take a look at some other current temperatures right now. 11 degrees for Edmonton, 15 in Athabasca, 13 degrees for Cold Lake, 16 in both White Court and Edson, 13 also in Rocky Mountain House, 18 degrees in Jasper, 8 degrees in Red Deer, 15 degrees in Saskatoon, 6 degrees for Prince Albert, 7 degrees for Meadow Lake, 5 degrees for Melfort, and 7 for North Battleford. Let's head a little more in-depth to our regional temperatures. Head looking overnight for North Battleford, minus 4 overnight with some clear, clear skies and a bit of sunshine, and all sunshine tomorrow getting up to plus eight as their daytime high minus one overnight in Cold Lake with clear skies there My, getting up to eight degrees tomorrow as their daytime high mostly cloudy a little bit of sunshine coming in with some winds though from the east northeast close to 15 kilometers an hour for us here in Lloydminster minus three degrees overnight with clear skies warming up to four degrees tomorrow for our daytime high with sun and some cloud coverage with some northeast winds coming at 15 kilometers an hour and take a look at the next seven days Sunday is going to be one of the cooler days hanging into minus seven is our daytime low in the morning heading into minus one in the uh, daytime high with cloudy skies there. Monday minus eight uh, is the morning uh, morning low there and three degrees will be the daytime high for Monday with mostly cloudy skies and a bit of sun. So we'll enjoy the weekend while we can with some sunshine, a little cooler temperatures heading into the later part, but we'll have more primetime local news coming up after the break. Welcome back. With the march of club route across the prairies, producers need to be on the alert. Gerard Lampau gets an update from the Vermilion area. So in Alberta, club route is managed under the province's Agricultural Pests Act. The law requires landowners to control the named pests. Kathy Erickson Airchuck gets out often in the Vermilion area looking for weeds, pests, rats and club root. So the County of Vermilion River has the responsibility to, um, to check for these named pests like clubroot 
and to come up with a policy and make some decisions on how they'll manage it. The county of Vermilion River detected its first club root site in 2011, then in 2017, which had more moisture, five fields tested positive. 2018 was a lot drier. We found one additional positive field, and so we are, we are finding some club root in the county. It's definitely present. Um, not at high levels and not in huge, you know, crop killing infestations yet. There are management tools available that producers need to take advantage of, including club root resistant varieties. This is much better than dealing with a large infestation, which will drastically limit the growing of canola. There's not a lot of options left. You may have to just stop growing canola. So we're in, a, we're in a good place to be finding it right now. And I think that's why the Vermilion River is putting such a, a push on trying to keep the information out there and keep looking for it. During the summer, county inspectors will do random checks scouting for club root. Suspected plant samples are sent to the provincial lab for further testing and confirmation. Then the conversation begins with the landowners. We start talking about, um, you know, a management plan and letting people know that there might be a problem and they can start planning for how they'll manage it. County of Vermilion River policy requires a crop rotation of a minimum two years out of canola, a minimum tillage rotation and ensuring that soil from the field is not allowed to be blown or moved away. Another cover crop can be used that's not a brassica. Any other cereal or pulse crop um, that won't harbor the, the club roots spores. Gerard Lampau, Primetime Local News. Well, that's it for Ag News. Sports is next, but first let's take a look at your ag prices. Every member of the City Centre Auto Body team has been through extensive training. We're constantly upgrading our team's education to reflect current collision repair technique. The Lloydminster Steelers are off to a rocky start at the Alberta Female Midget AAA Championship after losing to the Calgary Fire this morning. Calgary had several scoring chances before capitalizing midway through the first period. Lloyd Minster got on the board in the second, courtesy of Kelsey Hall, before the fire added two more goals to lead 3-1. The Steelers fought to within one thanks to a Brooklyn Palmer goal, but musters another solid scoring chance in that final minute of play. Next game for the Steelers is against Red Deer in just a few minutes' time. The Lloydminster Comprehensive Barons hopes for a provincial championship in the men's team's first Saskatchewan hoopla appearance ended last night in a quarterfinal loss to Winston Knoll from Regina. The Barons led 44-27 at halftime but struggled defensively in the third and fourth quarters losing 88-84. The absence of co-captain Nikita Hopka-Shinoff who was out with an angle ankle injury. That disappointment carried into this morning's coalition game against Regina Luther, where the Barons lost 91-55. to And now we'll, be, we'll take it live to Josh Ryan, who's live on location at the Lloyd Mall. Welcome back to the Lloyd Mall, where we have the first ever kids indoor tennis tournament put on by the LTA. Josh Ryan joined with Devin Orbeck, who I believe you won your first uh, match here today? Yep. Yeah, I did. Um, uh, yeah, I, I won it. 11-7. Pretty good game. That is a pretty solid debut. So you've been playing tennis for how long now? Uh, a couple of years right now. Uh, I, well, I started when I was younger, but I haven't really played for it since like a few years ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and what, so what got you into tennis? Because obviously it's not the first sport of choice for a lot of people up here in the Great White North. Um, well, it just looked like a lot of fun. Just to do something other than hockey and baseball it was just looked like a good thing to do. Just be outdoors and a nice hobby. For definitely a nice hobby. Pretty physical hobby, though. This is probably more taxing than playing baseball, hey? Yeah, it is. It's, it's, a, it's a lot different than baseball. Just being on your own, not being on a team. It's a lot different. Now, do you, now, do you like that challenge of having to sort of push yourself? Or do you prefer having people around you, I guess? Uh, I prefer having people around me, but I also like having a challenge, just being by myself and like making it all up to me. Now, is that what's the hardest part of that? Is it the uh, 
like the, the practice portion of it where you're doing a lot of reps by yourself? Or is it when you say struggle in a game and you have to kind of refresh yourself and get ready for the next point? I think it's more just in the struggling in the game because with team sports, usually you'd have someone there talking to you, saying it's okay and like hyping you up, but in there it's just yourself. What do you do to hype yourself up? Do you have any kind of uh, phrase or write something on your shoes? I know some people do that. They write a phrase on their shoes to kind of look down whatever time. Uh, no, not really. I just kind of tell myself not to mess up. <laughs> Don't mess up, eh? Yep. I mean, whatever works for each person. Uh, so you were saying you're not a big tennis watcher. Do you have a favorite tennis player? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I just don't watch enough tennis. I like playing it, but it's just not something I watch too much. You should probably you should check out Bianca Andrescu. She's the new Canadian who's rising through the ranks. She'll do, be doing really well. How many more games do you have today? Um, I'm pretty sure I have around three or four, but I'm not too sure. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for joining us, Devin. And uh, we will be back with more here at Lloyd Mall. But first, let's check in and see what's going on with your local weather. All right, thanks very much, Josh. Take a look at some other current temperatures again. 9 degrees, as mentioned earlier, for us here in Lloydminster. 9 degrees in Marwayne, 12 degrees for Bonneville, 13 in Cold Lake, 10 in Lac La Biche, 11 out in Edmonton, as well as in Vermilion, 14 for Wainwright, 15 for Provo, 16 for Macklin, 10 degrees out in Mainstone, and 7 in North Battleford, St. Wahlberg, Meadow Lake, and Green Lake, and 12 for Isle La Crosse, 8 degrees out in Buffalo Narrows and La Loche, 15 degrees, excuse me, in Larange, 10 degrees out in Flint Flon, 13 degrees for South End, 8 degrees in Wollaston Lake, and 9 out in Stony Rapids, 11 for Uranium City, 5 degrees out in Grand Prairie, 10 degrees in Peace River, 6 degrees out in Slave Lake, 16 degrees in Fort McMurray, 13 degrees, excuse me, in Fort Chippewa, 15 degrees in High Level. Heading down south, 15 degrees in Lethbridge, 19 degrees in Medicine Hat, 14 degrees for Cal uh, Calgary, 17 degrees for Banff, 12 degrees for Swift Current, 18 degrees for Kindersley, 13 degrees for Moose Jaw, 10 degrees for Regina and Yorkton. Taking a look at the at the regional temperatures right now for tomorrow, 4 degrees for us is the daytime high tomorrow in Lloydminster as well as in Vegerville, St. Paul, Wainwright, right, Wainwright, excuse me, sitting at 3 degrees, 5 degrees for Vermilion and Maidstone as well, 8 degrees out in Colt Lake, Pierceland, uh, 8 as well as Lac La Biche, 7 degrees for Edmonton as well as their daytime high tomorrow. As we take a look at some next 24 hour temperatures here, as you can kind of see, starting with Friday night here, it'll get towards Towards the five degree mark for uh, for us right now. Currently, as it, the graphic is trying not to get a little, it's going to get a little cooler heading into the evening time. Of course, with the computer kind of freezing on me right now, it's going to get a little colder. As I mentioned earlier, minus three for us heading into overnight temperatures as it gets warmed up to our daytime high tomorrow of four degrees. As we take a look at our as our computer is just trying to get uh, out of out of control here. There we go, seven degree. Take a look at our next seven days. Minus one for tomorrow on excuse me on Sunday. Three degrees on Monday. Four Four degrees on Tuesday with a 65% chance of some showers there. Four degrees on Wednesday as well with mostly cloudy skies and a bit of sunshine. Minus three on Thursday with mostly sunny skies and a bit of clouds. Two degrees on Friday and then Friday will be a little bit cooler in the morning sitting at minus 10 degrees, which will be the coldest time for the morning. But that's another look at your next seven days. We'll have more prime time local news coming up after the break. Thank you very much, guys. Back at Lloyd Mall for the first ever Kids Indoor Tennis Tournament put on by TLTA along with the partnership of Lloyd Mall. I'm joined by age 9 to 10 competitor Lexi Orbach. So following up your brother's interview that we just did a short while ago, um, you've also won a few matches already. So where are you sitting in your pool? Uh, first place. Nicely done. Now, when we were talking off camera, you were saying this is your first time playing tennis. Yes. First time ever you're winning already? Yeah. So what, what kind of got you into tennis? Your brother played it or it was just something you wanted to try? Yeah, I just wanted to try it for fun because I'm with my best friend and her mom works here. So we just wanted to see if we, we um, would win anything and just do it for fun. Okay. Um, so uh, who's your best friend then? Hi, Alactin. Oh, okay, cool. That's awesome. And uh, obviously you're on the way to winning something. Um, what would be the best prize for you? Uh, $300. That'd be my best prize as well, for sure. Um, now, you play a lot of other sports? Uh, well, I do play softball, but that's about it. Okay. And uh, what do you, so what, how, do you, how do you find tennis compared to softball? Like, is it way different or more fun, less fun? Well, I kind of think it's different, and I kind of like them both the same. Okay, both the same? How, how is it different? Uh, well, for... Softball, um, the ball's bigger and it's a little bit easier. 
Okay. A little bit easier to hit the ball? Def definitely not easier for me. I struggle in softball. So how many more games do you have? Do you know? Uh, I do not know. How many more games are you going to win? Uh, I'm hoping for at least one. Okay. That's good to hear. I'm sure you'll win a few more before the day is done. So thank you very much, Lexi. And uh, we'll be right back uh, with more in primetime local news. Let's check out what's going on with question of the day. All right, so our question of the day stems from some old school video games, and we asked, have you ever played, replayed any old school video games and if, recently, and if so, which ones have you played? Just some of the comments here, someone, some people, a lot of people have old school systems like N64, Super Nintendo, uh, there's one person that said Zelda 2, Pac-Man, it's a classic, oh, one. classic one there. Yep. And then this woman sent a photo saying this uh, had a 900 game collection in like physical copies of video games in their house. Wow, I that's a pretty impressive collection, I must say. I can't imagine having that. I mean, I had a lot growing up as well, but I was not to that extent, no. Yeah, that would be crazy. Uh, lots of choices though, so you won't <laughs> have to uh, be like, oh, I played that once, I don't have anything else. You have a lot to choose from, so that's always nice. I started off as with an N64, then moved up to, you know, the PS4, PS2, excuse me, then an Xbox 360, and then now with my Xbox One. I don't know, what, what did you have growing up? Uh, I started out with the GameCube, loved the GameCube, got a DS, um, <laughs> and then I got a 360 Xbox, and then I recently just went to the Xbox One as well. Yeah, so we're pretty similar yeah. to an extent, yeah. Yep. All right, well, it's that time of the show right now where we're going to take a look at your pets because today we're announcing the winner at the end of the second hour on Primetime Local News. So let's take a look at the submissions for today. This is Naya. Oh, submitted that's by a cute one. Very, very cute. Just chilling. Just looking at the camera. Yeah, so adorable. Up next, we have Olive and Charlie, Aww. submitted by Brianna. Just pals going for yeah, a car Yeah, best ride. friends. <laughs> Going for a nice little car ride. Up next, we have Butterball submitted there by Cassandra. Just cuddled oh, up in her house. Oh, it's just so snuggled. Yeah, so cute. Just nice and warm. This is Chloe and Ricky Bobby. Oh, I love the jackets. I know. Love it. Love it. It's submitted <laughs> there by Chelsea. Thank you for that. This is Tiberius oh. submitted there by Miranda. Oh, just all cuddled up. That's very, so cute. Very cute indeed. Well, if your pet was shown on today or throughout the rest of the week, you're automatically entered to win a Lloydminster Pet Pad gift card, which you're giving away at the end of the second hour of primetime local news. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. All right, I'm very pleased to be joined with Dr. Richard Starkey, former MLA for Lloydminster, Vermilion area. Dr. Starkey, thank you so much for joining us here today. Great to be here. Well, let's talk about um, not you're with you not seeking re-election just mm -hmm. your decision on why you decided not to I, I felt that it was time to move on to other things um, you know it's been seven years now that I've been the MLA it is uh, a job that uh, requires uh, you know your full attention and really means that there's not very much else that you can do you know in terms of other uh, yeah. pursuits and uh, you know when I stepped away from veterinary practice seven years ago I had plans to do a lot of other things I still have those plans <laughs> Uh, and uh, you know now, if I'm not the MLA anymore, I'll be able to pursue those. What are some of the, during your seven-year tenure mm -hmm. as the MLA? What are some things that you're most proud of? You know, you're big in the you were big in the community involvement over right. the years. So, right. what are some other some of those accomplishments that you feel that you've done well over the last seven years? Well, here locally in in, in the Vermilion Lloydminster constituency, uh, I feel very good about um, a Pioneer Home being built at, right. uh, as an expansion to Pioneer Lodge. Um, you know, very positive about the completion of uh, the new schools like College Park and, uh, you know, the uh, new E.H. Walter School out of Paradise Valley, modernization of St. Jerome School in Vermilion. There's still some projects that are on the go, but we've at least moved the needle on the planning for an underpass at the Kitscotty Interchange, at the interchange between Highway 16 and 897. And, and then numerous projects all around the constituency, the Dewberry Arena, the Dewberry Hall. There's been funding for projects in Innisfe Innisfree and in uh, Viking and in other parts of the constituency. Uh, you know, at a provincial level, I'd say the three main ones that I'm most proud of are the tourism framework that was passed and is now really set our tourism uh, industry right. in focus. Uh, the rebuild of the provincial park system that was damaged in the uh, in the floods of 2013, including Kananaskis Golf Course, and then the rural uh, health review that I conducted in 2014 and 15. What are, you were obviously not part of that merger with UCP and Wild right. Rose. Why did you decide not to be 
part of that merger? Uh, well, I, I felt that the new party didn't reflect the values that I was elected on. I was elected as a progressive conservative. And I was concerned that the new party wouldn't reflect values of progressive conservatism. And uh, uh, certainly, in my judgment, that's a correct assessment. Uh, the new party is, is uh, very much a right-wing party and uh, is much more reflective of uh, some of the things that the Wild Rose uh, carried forward and a lot of the policies they've adopted from the Wild Rose. That was not a party I ever joined. And so I, I couldn't see myself being part of that party. Um, and and that, that assessment that I made at the time of the merger uh, certainly has been borne out in the last uh, you know, little over a year and a half. I, I would not have been comfortable at all in the UCP. And now, of course, as we're heading into the election in just a couple of weeks here, I guess what are some of your thoughts on some of those bigger parties' platforms heading into April 16? Well, I, I'm concerned that th this election is more about you know people being told what they need to vote against and not vote for. Uh, I mean, the the, uh, the governing party, the NDP, is telling you know people they have to vote against the leader of the opposition. Uh, the UCP is telling people they have to vote against the NDP and their record. And I mean, I think there is a lot to be criticized in the current government's record, to be sure. I was one of their most vocal critics. But uh, I'm really watching to see parties tell us what they're for and what they're going to propose positively for right. Albertans. And, uh, you know, in that regard, I think we have to have our ears open to all of the parties and their proposals. Um, I know the Alberta Party, as an example, has brought forward a, a children first policy that uh, I think has a lot of potential. There's a lot, a lot there. Right. And if we're talking about early childhood education and child care, I think those are policies that Albertans should take a close look at. So, you know, when people ask me, I encourage them to look, you know, what are parties proposing? What are they putting forward as a concrete positive proposal? Don't just, you know, well, don't vote for that guy or don't vote for, don't vote for them. And the other thing I'm telling people is take a very close look at the local candidates. I mean, ultimately, that's the person that represents you in the legislature. Right. And that's the person you're going to go to if yeah. you need an assistance with a, with a government. And that's the work that I did, and I was very proud of that work. I guess one, just before we wrap up here, I guess is there one last thing you want to say to the people of the Lloydman Server Million area, just lastly, before your final kind of... <laughs> Last <laughs> rod. There, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'll say, I, and I said this, and I've, uh, I, I'm absolutely uh, am sincere with this. I, it's been an honor and a privilege uh, of my adult life to be a representative in Edmonton of this constituency of the people there. Uh, you know, I've always tried to serve, you know, with integrity and to, you know, stick to my principles and my ethics. And uh, uh, while I'm proud of the record, I, I am also humbled by the support that I received. Dr. Starkey, thank you very much for taking time to join us. Appreciate it, as always. Rachel Milkey is joining us today, and Rachel is the CEO and founder of Hilberg & Burke, very well known throughout Saskatchewan and throughout the world for that matter. Rachel, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. I want to talk about an initiative that you launched on International Women's Day. It was the Venus Pin. Um, we posted your video and, and talked a little bit about what your initiative is, but can you explain it to us why you decided to launch it and where the, the, some of the proceeds will go? Sure. March is an especially um, uh, just interesting and special month for us at Hill Bergen Burke because of International Women's Day, and we take that opportunity to really celebrate women um, in our community, and we've partnered with different organizations over the last few years. This year, one um, initiative that we were uh, particularly interested in focusing on was um, some of the lack of access to feminine hygiene products that women have in our communities. It's actually um, a big problem within a lot of women who are going into shelters or some of the women who are in our um, First Nations communities. And it's a larger issue than I think we even realized initially. So we decided that we wanted to come up with a piece of jewelry. So we launched our Venus pin to really signify and signal women coming together. And um, we're hoping to sell um, these pins throughout the rest of the year. We're going to sell 3,300 pins. And uh, if we're able to do that, we will fundraise $100,000 for seven organizations across Western Canada that will supply feminine hygiene products to women in need. And um, each pin basically represents us being able to contribute a six month supply of feminine hygiene products for these women throughout these organizations. That's amazing, Rachel. I think a lot of people don't realize that that is a major need in, in a lot of those communities and, and with the groups that you mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. How can people get the pin? Uh, is it online and in stores or are you just selling online or, or how does that work? 
online and in store. So if you're close to one of our eight retail locations in Saskatoon, Edmonton, or Calgary, then you can just go and visit our stores. Um, or if you're not, then you can go online to hillbergenberg.com and purchase our pin um, right off the homepage. We have a banner uh, showcasing the, the campaign. And um, yeah, so that's where you can get it. Okay, and now let's talk about uh, something else exciting that you're involved with, the spring collection. Now, what are we going to see in the Hilberg and Burke spring collection, Rachel? Yeah, our new collections are always a really exciting time for us to showcase what is going on globally in fashion through the release of new products with new stones. And I'm really excited about some of the pieces that we're releasing this, this collection. Um, our spring summer collection is inspired by retro Miami. So there's these like beautiful washed out pastel colors that have inspired the pieces. Um, and we have new stones, opal and beautiful chalcedony and um, really interesting design elements like enamel, enamel paneling that we've never used before in our collections. Um, so it's just, you're gonna see something that you haven't seen from Hill Burke and Burke before, so I can't wait for the collection to launch next week. And will that be on the website then? If, if people can't get to the stores right away, will there be a, a big, I assume, like a launch campaign released on the web? Online and in stores on Monday. How do you find your inspiration, Rachel, for a lot of this jewelry? I know you have a, a good team, but obviously you're fairly hands-on as well. Yeah, we really look at what's going on in terms of trends globally and then find a way to extrapolate, extrapolate that into um, you know, what we feel like the Hilberg and Burke customer really wants. So, um, you know, we're always keeping a tab on global trends and what's, um, what's coming out in fashion in terms of like colors and fabrics and patterns. And then we take that information to develop pieces that we feel are like the staple pieces that um, every woman should have in their jewelry repertoire. And we really try and focus on those classic items that will really last you for the rest of your life. So when you buy a piece of Hilberg and Burke jewelry, not only will it look fabulous today, but it will look amazing in five and 10 and 20 years. Great. Well, thank you so much, Rachel. We're out of time, and I just want you to remind our viewers once again uh, where they can purchase the Venus pin and where they can check out uh, the new spring collection when it's released next week. Absolutely. So in any of our retail locations, we have stores in Regina, Edmonton, Calgary, and Saskatoon, or you can access it globally through hillbergenberg.com. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today, Rachel. We really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy your weekend. Thanks for having me. Take care. Thank you very much. As you can see here, there is no one behind me anymore. We just had the last games finish up and they're now off to get their uh, awards for the 11 to 12 and 9 to 10 age groups over at the other uh, court. It's been a fun time here at the Lloyd Mall. They're hoping to do this again if the space is available. And of course, that uh, regular tennis season outdoors is coming up. So hope everyone enjoyed the coverage and you enjoyed the rest of your weekend. Let's head back into studio and wrap up with Abby and Connor. All right, thanks very much, Josh. Take a look at your seven day forecast one last time. Four degrees tomorrow, minus one on Sunday, three degrees on Monday, four degrees on Tuesday, Wednesday, with that 65% chance of some spring showers there. Minus three on Mon on Thursday, excuse me, with a sun and cloud mix, and then two degrees on Friday with a sun and cloud mix as well. But cooler temperatures into the morning as well, but nonetheless, still just great temperatures. It's all pretty around. good. I can't complain with the weather, so. It's, it's going to be nice for the next yeah, couple days. Absolutely. Well, it's that time of the show because it's it's, gonna be your, it's your first one, so this yes, is exciting. I've been waiting for this all day. <laughs> you wouldn't tell me who the winner was, so I'm so excited. No, because uh, we're about to announce the winner of our of the Lloydminster Pet Pad gift card. Taking a look here right now. Let's take a look at C on the screen here. Oh, so excited. Moxie and Hershey, oh, just the two just... Yeah chilling and hanging out in the sun. Love just them. Loving. They're just cuddling, having yeah, fun. Just just chilling. Well, thank, congratulations to you, Don. We'll be in contact with you on Monday for you, about the details to come. Pick up your Pet Pad gift card. Thank you to everybody who sent in photos over the past week. And also, if you want to make sure and your chance to win, make sure you do send them to us on Facebook or uh, our email as well. So just great. Good weekend for them. Oh, perfect weekend. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's going to do it for us this evening, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend.